All right, guys, we are here on Twitch Live again. I actually really like bringing the, the Twitch people because if I don't know if you saw the last video, they have some funny comments. So make sure you're checking them out down there. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the ISO selections for the Horsemen, at the very least what I'm running with. And we're going to talk about a potentially broken ISO, though we've done a bunch of testing on it. and I'm not sure if it is just visual or if it is indeed broken. But anyway, let's get in there and, and enjoy the new Sable opener for the two videos. Let's go. All right, so first things first, we got to talk about the Raider ISO and how it might be broken. So if you see at these three pictures, we have Raider ISO level three, Raider ISO level four, and Raider ISO level five. So at three, it is what it is. But if you look at what you get from upgrading to level four, you're supposed to get 10% max health, armor, focus, and resistance. But once you actually upgrade it, what you're getting is the level five bumps. So you're getting an extra 20% chance to proc it. Uh, you're not getting the extra damage until later. Well, you are getting some of the extra damage. You're just not getting the extra flat damage that level five gives you, I believe it is. Uh, and then when you upgrade from four to five, that's when you're getting the level four boost. That's when you're getting the max health, the armor, the focus, and the resistance. Now, we've done some testing with this, and the damage doesn't seem different from three to four on your raider. So I'm not sure if this is just visual or if this is actually a live bug where you're getting the benefits from the level five blue by putting a level four upgrade on. Uh, so I don't know, but just food for thought, I'm gonna shoot this over to the developers and get a, a statement on that and we'll, we'll see what it is and, and how they're gonna handle it. Uh, so yeah, cool. Now let's go ahead and look at the actual characters, uh, the Horseman team with Apocalypse and the ISO selections. All right, so here we are with our five Apocalypse person team for Horseman plus Apocalypse. We got Archangel, Red Hulk, uh, Apocalypse, Morgan, and Rogue. We'll break these down one by one, starting with Archangel uh, and and what I suggest people do. So before we like make a recommendation, let's look at why we would make that recommendation. So if you look at Archangel's basic attack and more importantly his assist counter, uh, he does do bleeds on the assist counter, but he's doing AOE on his basic. And he's doing AOE on his special. Now, more often than not, when you are in control of this team, you will be opening up with the special because you would rather have that offense up. You'd rather have the cleanse to your Death Seed characters, whether it be in War Raid, wherever else, if you're in control of them. And then, of course, speed bar is king. So if you get a block from an enemy, getting an additional speed bar, that's huge. And also, there's the line in his passive. Uh, when Death Seed uh, ally crit, heal themselves and all Death Seed allies for 3% of max health. This by data mine apparently does carry over to the horseman when we have empowered archangel though that is a data mine so that remains to be seen but he's also getting crit chance from his passive that's also so to the horseman uh, and that's why for me and i have already implemented this i have raider on my uh, archangel i didn't notice a big enough difference between striker and raider in the raids so because i feel like raider is better elsewhere I'm happy to make that. So I haven't actually put ISO level four on him yet. I just don't have the ions for that, but that will be uh, my decision for Archangel. All right, and that brings us to Red Hulk coming in next. Uh, so again, we got to look at his basic and his assist counter. So his assist counter can be very strong. It does flip positive effects, which is great. Uh, and when he's charged, it's doing 100% extra damage and flipping an additional positive effect. That looks fantastic for Striker. But we also need to look at how many times his basic hits. So his basic hits two times. Uh, in war, it's going to hit four times, which is crazy. Uh, repeat this attack two additional times. That, or maybe it's just three times in war. Uh, but regardless, that's three hits. That's three potential crits. That's a lot of vulnerabilities that you can get out there and just more chances to actually make sure it happens. Uh, when he performs a counterattack, if he's at charge, again, he's doing a bunch of damage there. That would kind of lead more into the striker phase. But then we got to look at his special. So his special is AOE on the primary and adjacent targets. With him being empowered now, he's actually going to be stripping uh, revives off of all those characters, which is great, giving offense down to everybody. Maybe we like Skirmisher because of the focus for that, uh, but I don't. <laughs> uh, and then when you're using his special, you're going to want to use as much as possible because it's going to fill the speed bar for himself and for horseman allies as well, which is huge, uh, and, and for Apocalypse as well. So that's AOE, his basic, hitting more than once. 
and his ultimate hits all enemies as well. So it's attacking all enemies for a huge amount of damage, flipping all positive effects, applying trauma, heal block, all kinds of good stuff. And it comes with 500% focus. So this is why I would never suggest Skirmisher on Red Hulk because his most important ability, his ultimate, is getting that focus. It's going to do those flips. It's going to put the trauma out. You should be fine. It also ignores defense up, so you're not worried about defense up, increasing the enemy's resistance or anything like that. So for me, because of all the AoEs, I lean heavily towards Raider. I do already have him as a level 4 Raider, and I have not regretted it whatsoever. I just think there's going to be more impactful strikers on this team, uh, and we're going to talk about them in just a few seconds. All right, let's jump over Apocalypse for now and talk about Morgan. So Morgan's assist, assist slash counter info, uh, she's very potent as a striker just because of this assist counter. So she's attacking the primary target, clearing positive effects, excluding taunt. On crit, it's actually going to copy all positive effects instead of taunt. So Raider kind of fits in pretty good there too. Uh, but this line right here makes striker the clear winner for me is steal 10% health from the primary target and redistribute to self. Not to be confused with 10% max health from the primary target. So the lower health of the enemy, the less this does actually do. Uh, but I cannot tell you how many times the striker attack, just the amount of damage that she does, the amount of health Morgan has in her kit, this rips through enemies. And it just seems more impactful than the Red Hulk striker. Definitely more impactful than those uh, Archangel bleeds. Uh, and, then, and then you talk about the rest of her kit. Huge damage everywhere she does. Uh, I think it's I think it's percentile life actually from her special, but her ultimate absolutely rips people apart. But we should also talk about that ultimate. It gains extra crit chance, I believe. So that could also lead to Raider as well. I know a lot of people felt Raider was the move for her. I lean to Striker though, just because I think there's better Raiders. Uh, I think we're gonna have enough vulnerables that she's gonna be able to utilize that. And with the focus Red Hulk is giving from his passive, that 60%, I think it might be okay. But we do need to talk about the absolute worst decision Scopely ever made, and that is giving stupid amounts of resistance to enemy teams. So part of Morgan's passive is that she's giving 100% resistance to Darkhold allies, but also Apocalypse and Horseman allies. So the 60% that Red Hulk is giving is still 40% less than what Morgan is giving on the resistance side. So there is a really strong battle between Morgan as a striker for her insane damage and Morgan as a skirmisher to land the debuffs from her ultimate, particularly that trauma and the ability block on enemy Morgan if you're doing a mirror matchup. Now, Apocalypse is a support, not a controller, so Morgan's not going to ability block and trauma him. So it remains to be seen how important it is for her to land that, but in every other mode, in every other team match, it is very important for Morgan to land that. So for her, it's definitely a power struggle. I do have her at four striker and floor uh, skirmisher, but I tend to always leave her as a striker. It just feels better for me, even on offense. It just feels better. I notice the insane damage. And for that reason, for me, Morgan is a striker. And that leads us to our final horseman, Rogue. Uh, you'll notice right off the bat, her assists, counter, and even her basic, not much going on there. So I immediately start getting away from the striker. Uh, so let's just read through. So she's going to clear barrier. Fantastic. But that's only on her basic. Uh, she is also doing that on the uh, assist uh, counter, actually. But we also know Red Hulk is going to be clearing barrier with his special. If primary target does not have barrier, bonus attack. So good. She's going to do a bonus attack. So that's hitting twice. That's a good little raider nod. And if this character has one or more horseman allies, always bonus attack 300% and gain 25% crit chance. So she's getting crit chance up to 100% when she's on the full team. So that makes me think like Raider could have a good position here, a good foothold for Rogue. But then I look at her special. Now her special is what makes her special. <laughs> uh, she's going to apply just a slew of negative effects. We're talking trauma, slow, defense down, offense down, ability block, heal block, and disrupt. And she reduces the turn meter of the primary target. If she doesn't land these debuffs, She's kind of useless. <laughs> well, that move is not it's not useless. She still does a turn meter rewind. She'll still cover herself in buffs and then she's taunting. That's all great. But she didn't debilitate the enemy character like you need her to. And for that reason, I heavily lean into Skirmisher Rogue. In fact, my rogue is going to be a Skirmisher. I made the mistake and put Striker on her before I thought things through. Skirmisher is definitely the way to go for Rogue. There is an argument for Raider because she is hitting a bunch on her basic. She's going to always crit on the full horseman team. Her ultimate also hits all enemies. So it's a lot of multi-targeted hits. I get all that. But if she doesn't land her debuffs, it's just no bueno. 
All right. And she only gets the extra focus in Crucible on her special. She gets the extra focus on her ultimate outside of Crucible, but it's her opening turn that is the special. It's the most important ability that she actually lands. So for her, I'm she's going to be a skirmisher for me. When I do Ice Level 5, it's 100% going to be skirmisher rogue. And then we got the big man himself. We got Apocalypse. We don't know the guaranteed kit. We know Tana's data mine. By Tana's data mine, I strongly lead towards Striker, Striker Morgan, Striker Apocalypse. Going to have a bunch of vulnerables to hit into with two raiders and a skirmisher. Also, I like how Rogue will do a targeted vulnerable. The only thing that would change that is if Apocalypse, and it wasn't in the data mine, but if he somehow comes through with a 25% chance to assist on Horseman turn. If he does that, then he becomes a skirmisher, and we have a we have a bunch of different changes. So the advice at the end of the day is the same as it's always been. Wait if you want to be smart. Don't wait if you want to have fun. <laughs> That's how Scopely kind of makes us play against ourselves, unfortunately. Uh, but I don't think he's gonna do that. I wouldn't be you know what would be kind of cool though? If in Apocalypse Kit it said 25% chance for Rogue to assist. <laughs> <laughs> on horseman turn and and then rogue would still be a skirmisher uh because it definitely wouldn't be morgan she's too impactful it wouldn't be archangel it'd be too many bleeds and it wouldn't be red hog maybe there's a world where he calls in rogue to do assists uh but i doubt it i doubt it so guys that's what i'm doing for my isos just a recap i'm doing archangel raider red hulk raider morgan striker rogue skirmisher and probably apocalypse striker if the data mines are to be believed i'll see you guys tomorrow bye